late, late last year. So at this point, South African government, no action, but the Indian community is certainly fighting back and defending the, 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 their own name and making sure that Malema is held accountable for what some are terming as reckless um, and dangerous uh, divisive remarks. And journalist Paso Kiliadiko, thanks for speaking with us. African migrants who were rescued from the Mediterranean last week were turned away by Italy and Malta have arrived in Spain's port of Valencia. Three vessels, including the Quaris, rescued the 630 migrants who have now docked in the harbour. Health officials, interpreters and Red Cross workers were on ground to offer support to the migrants. A thousand Red Cross workers and police officers were also drafted in to handle their arrival. Spain's new socialist government has promised free health care and says it will investigate each asylum case. This is after adopting a migrant-friendly stance since taking off his post two weeks ago. After days of trying to reach a destination, the charity ship Aquarius finally docks in Spain's port of Valencia to the cheering and clapping of the migrants aboard. On hand to receive them were officials in white protective suits and masks. Spain swooped to help 629 mainly sub-Saharan Africans on board the Aquarius last week after Italy's new government, asserting its anti-immigrant credentials, refused to let it dock. Spanish Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez, who took office two weeks ago, took the opportunity to show a more liberal stance. The plight of the Aquarius, run by Doctors Without Borders with Franco-German charity SOS Mediterranean, highlighted the European Union's failure to agree on how to manage the huge influx of people fleeing poverty and conflict. MSF officials said at a press conference the closing of ports to migrants is shameful. To refuse to allow 630 desperate people um, to disembark in, in a port of safety, it cannot be stated as a victory. It's shameful. The ship arrived carrying 106 people rescued from unstable boats near Libya. The others had been transferred to an Italian Coast Guard vessel and a ship belonging to the Italian Navy to make the journey safer. The Red Cross says there were 123 unaccompanied minors amongst the migrants. Meanwhile, the Malian migrant who dramatically rescued a small boy dangling from a balcony in Paris is due to meet Mali's president Ibrahim Boubacar Keita. Mamadou Kassam, dubbed as Spider-Man for his daring rescue efforts, had earlier returned to Mali to a hero's welcome. He says he is delighted to return to his native country for a visit. He is expected to return to France to sign his employment contract with the fire department on June the 28th. Mr. Kassam was on an illegal migrant who was given French citizenship and a fireman's job after he earned widespread praise for his dramatic rescue. He comes from a village near Kays in western Mali and is expected to remain in the country for three days. And joining us to discuss this more is a leadership coach, Abiola Salami, who's here in the studio with us. Thanks for coming on the program. Thank you for having me. So what an interesting one. It's great to see that the Malian uh, president is meeting Mr. Gassama. Do you agree that his sudden recognition comes because, of course, uh, the French government had paid attention to him? You know, uh, the, the challenge with Africa is we are... To a large extent, xenocentric in the things that we do. I Meaning, we have a preference for uh, everything foreign. And so, this gentleman might have been doing some good things in the country, in Mali, before, but now he's out of the country, then the French government's eyes on him, then his home country is applauding him. That is only the time they can recognize him. And you know, the thing is, it's important for African leaders to realize that you don't need to wait for, um, for the global community to put a spotlight on your citizens, because as a is the confidence quotient of citizenship is directly proportional to the perceived inferiority of leadership. And so it's important that African leaders instill confidence in its people first, not, not until they receive an endorsement from any agency outside, outside the continent. Now, talking about endorsements now, why do you think that people gain more recognition when they travel abroad? 
Mm. Well, you know, uh, some of the things we need to start to remind ourselves about in, in, in Africa is the fact that something is white doesn't make it right. And the, flag, the fact that something is black doesn't make it bad. You know, we seem to have that preference for, for, for something that comes from the abroad, and it is just because of perceived inferiority. We have this level of inferiority complex where this is anything white. Look at the Super Eagles, for example, on Saturday when they played. You could see between them, apart from the skill set, you could see the level of confidence of the other side and the level of confidence of the Nigerian team. But a lot of guys on the Nigerian team are foreign-based players. Well, even as much as they are foreign-based players, even in the place that they play, sometimes it still happens. So far, your skin is black, you know, and, and, and I don't think it is less of racism. It is less of what they do to you. It is more of your response to what they are doing to you. In fact, there are times they're not doing anything to you. But once you see someone that is foreign, once you see a product that is foreign, once you see a president, for example, uh, some weeks ago, an African president visited White House, and you could see while the president of the U.S. was, was presenting and while he was presenting you could see the difference. You could see that there's low self-esteem on the part of someone, and the other guy is very confident. And that trickles down to everybody within the continent, within the country, the, the leader is leading, within the continent as a whole. So it's important for us to build self-confidence, for us to know that wherever it is that we find ourselves in the world, I like to fondly say, whether you've grown up in Mushi or you're in Michigan, that you stand tall, you stand tall and confident to deliver the things that you can deliver. But is it just a, a mindset, or is it actually the quality of things that we get from the Western countries that makes us, you know, believe that or embrace their culture and even their fashion. I mean, you know, uh, what to think of is, think about education, for example. Many people go abroad, you know, get educated because it is perceived and it's still perception because it is perceived to have higher quality. But what I think of is it is less of your certificate. It is more of colloquially now, sabiticate, which is the things that you know. And and I've, I've had the opportunity of relating with different kinds of people, those who schooled abroad, those who school here you can school abroad and you're still not that smart you can still school here and you're still very smart so what to think of really is what do you know and you don't even have to go abroad to know as much as you need to know there are many other platforms that you can stay here and learn from across the globe so it's important for us to know as a people that quality lies in us and we can get it from anywhere and for leaders to instill confidence you gain more as a leader you gain more by developing your people and developing their self-confidence than if you don't. But you just talked about education now. Let's talk about education. Would you say that the level of education you will get abroad and what you will get here in Africa, would you say that they could be on the same level? Okay, or why do we like to travel abroad to study? Regarding content, it could be better regarding content. But for most people, it is not the content. For most people, it is the certificate. So okay, you, can, so you can show up with a certificate that has a stamp of um, some um, top school in the US or in the UK. So far you can show up with that, then everybody embraces you. People pay less attention to the to the content, to the solution that it is that you can supply, that you can provide. I mean, as a recruiter, for example, I've seen a lot of that. You come up with a certificate that has the name of a big school, but when it's time to deliver, you cannot deliver. And somebody trained here can deliver very well. So it is good to get education anywhere in the world, quality education, pay attention to the content. But much more than that, it is important for us to start to build our self-confidence, even as Africans. Well, many thanks. Uh, leadership coach Abiola Salami for sharing your thoughts with us on Thank Network you. Africa. Thank you. And still to come on the program, an Egyptian man attempts to break world record with a large Ramadan lantern in his neighborhood. Please stay with us.